All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to um, conclude our practice test here for our test. Um, we finished yesterday at number 12, I believe, so we're going to take a look at 13 and move on, and you guys can follow along as you go, and feel free to ask questions as you go. Please note for number 13, all three of these are divisible by the same number. Okay, three can go into all three of them. So the way to rewrite this is as such. Uh, 3 divided by 3 is 1. Now, x to the 7th over x to the 1st, there's 7 x's on top, 1 down low. I can take 1 away from each, and I'm left with just x to the 6th. <clears throat> then on the right, 9 divided by 3 is 3. x to the 4th over x is 4 over 1. That's just x to the 3rd. There we go. Okay, nothing to it. Now, Mike discovered the pool in his backyard is leaking slowly. The pool holds 19,208 gallons of water and is leaking at a rate of 17 gallons per day. If Mike does not replace the water that has leaked from the pool, how many gallons of water will remain in the pool after 36 days? Now, before you solve the problem, explain why choices B and C are eliminated. Guys, the pool has 19,208 gallons of water. B and C has more than that. That doesn't make any sense at all. So we have 19,208 gallons. 17 gallons a day we're losing, okay, and it says after 36 days, just type in X or 36 there, okay, so we're looking at 19,208 minus 17 times 36, 18,596, boom, okay, okay. All right, Forest Lumber used the function S of T equals negative 105 T plus 525 to determine the salvage value S of T in dollars of a table saw T years after its purchase. How long will it take the saw to depreciate completely? A few things here. Look at your original equation. This 525 represents the cost of table saw, initial cost. And this negative 105 represents how much money how much is lost every year. So to depreciate completely means it's worth a value of zero dollars. All we're going to do is plug a zero in for S of T. Okay, I can add 105 T over. I can divide both sides by 105. T equals five years. Okay, um, you can play around with the numbers a little bit too if you want to and no problem. Erica went shopping for new clothes for school. She bought a pair of jeans for 68.88, meaning just one pair of jeans. So the 68.88 should be by itself. And several shirts for 10.74 each. If X represents the number of shirts she bought, which of the following equations should be used to find Y, the total cost of Erica's shopping trip? Well, if it says Y is the total cost of shopping trip, that means we need Y equals. So right away, I can cross off these two. X equals. Now. Between the two of these, you bought one pair of jeans for 68.88, meaning that there's no more than that. Okay, and each shirt costs 10.74. D is looking like our best answer. Okay, so um, all there is to it. All right, now if you guys look at number 17, <clears throat> I want you to try this problem on your own once you're done with this video. So please circle this, star it. It's a very good problem. Um, we'll talk about it later then, but for right now I'm going to skip to the back. The following systems of equations graph to the right. 5x minus 4, y equals 13, 4x plus 2y equals 0. Find the solution to the system. Um, it's just, well, when you have a system graph like this, it's just x marks the spot. What is this point right here? The point is to the right 1 down 2, x is 1, y is negative 2. Boom, c. Okay. Now, one little quick trick I'd like to show you guys right, <clears throat> Ow. is get y by itself. So up top, top equation, if I subtract 5x over, I get this. Divide by negative 4. Okay, there's my first equation, just getting y by itself. The second one, subtract 4x over, divide by 2. Okay, cool. Those are my two equations. Now check this out. I go to y equals. I type in these two equations. y equals 2x um, and y equals 5 fourths x. 
minus 13 over 4. I hit graph. Now you'll notice that I can see both graphs. Okay, they intersect there. I typed something in wrong. I had to have. Oh, it's negative 2x. Much better. Okay. What you can do next is you can hit second, trace, go down to intersect, hit enter five, four times. One, two, three, four. One, negative two. There's a right here for you. I will gladly show this to you guys more when we get back after our break. Use substitution to solve for y in the systems of equations. Substitution means get what well, get something by itself. Now in this case, um, because I'm solving for, well, let's see here. I just want to get y by itself because y is just chilling by itself. Subtract 4x over, I get this. Now, everywhere in my other equation, I'm going to plug in for y this. So it's 3x minus 3 times y. I'm replacing y with negative 4x plus 45 equals 60. 3x plus 12x uh, minus 135 equals 60. 15x equals 195. Divide each side by 15, we get x equals 13. Well, how come 13 is not right here? Well, guys, check this out. It says x equals 13. I want to sign for y now. So I'm going to plug it back into one of these equations. 4 times 13 plus y equals 45. 4 times 13 is 52. Subtract 52 over. Negative 7. Okay. There we go. Um, nice. Good stuff. Okay, here we go. Jack and Jane are married and both work. However, due to their relationship responsibilities at home, they have decided that they do not they do not want to work over sixty five hours per week combined. Jane is paid fourteen dollars per hour at her job, and Jack is paid ten dollars per hour at his. Neither of them are paid extra for overtime, but they are allowed to determine the number of hours per week that they wish to work. If they need to make a minimum of eight hundred fifty dollars per hour week before taxes, what's well, the maximum number of hours Jack can work per week according to these limits? All right, I'm going to say that x equals Jack's hours, y equals Jane's hours. Now, together they don't want to work over 65 hours, so that means x plus y, their hours combined, need to be less than or equal to 65. Then Jack makes 10 bucks an hour, 10x, and Jane makes $14 an hour, 14y, and they want to make at least 850 bucks. All right. This is how we set this up. Please make sure you guys are comfortable with that, okay? I actually just don't like this problem at all, so I just wanted to show you guys how to set the problem up. And you will not have one like this tomorrow on the test. I just needed to show you guys that, okay? All right, number 21, a few more problems left. Which system of inequalities is represented by the graph below? All right, a solid line means less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, and a dashed line means less than or greater than. So look at your two equations. This one is my y-intercept is plus 2. And let's find our next point on the line here, down here. That means down 4 over 1. So my slope of this line is negative 4, and my y-intercept is plus 2. Over here, check it out. There's two of them that don't match, these two. All right, now, the next thing is the top equation is the same, x minus 4. Um, can you guys see this graph right here? Can you see how it's, the, the shaded part is below it, beneath it? Beneath it means less than, less than or equal to, We're looking at B. Okay, so you just play around with it until you get it to work for you. All right, last two problems. Um, 22, a graph, graph the following systems of inequalities. All right, y is greater than negative 2x, y is greater than or equal to 3. So, my first part, my y-intercept is 0. My slope is negative 2, down 2 over 1. Can you see how it's greater than or equal to? Or sorry, just greater than. That means a dashed line. Greater than means shade above. Now watch how I shade this. I just do lines going this way, in the same direction as my line. My other equation is y is greater than or equal to 3, which is a horizontal line. 1, 2, 3. And greater than or equal to means everything above. Notice how I did a solid line there. 
Can you guys see that right here? It's checkered now. This is the solution to your system of inequalities, this region. So any point inside of here works. So when it says write an order pair that is in the solution, you could pick something like 1, 5. There's literally an infinite amount of answers here that could work. As far as one that's not a solution, pick anything outside of it. How about negative 1, negative 1? Important to note, the solution has to be shaded by both regions. Okay, um, If you can do that, you'll be in good shape. All right, last one here. Which of the following graph shows the solution set for the inequality? Please change this to less than or equal to. We'll see why in a minute. Um, this is a compound inequality. I sometimes like to call these the triple inequality ones because there's one, two, three sides. What you do to one side, you do to all three sides. So I need to get this x by itself in the middle. I'm going to add 6 to the middle. I'm going to add 6 to the right. I'm going to add 6 to the left. So 4 is less than or equal to 2x, which is less than or equal to 8. Now, I want to get x by itself. How do I get rid of the, the 2? Divide. 2 is less than or equal to x, is less than or equal to 4. All right. Now, that means the smallest possible part you can go to is 2, and because it's less than or equal to 2, it's filled in, and the highest part is 4. Right here. Typically, when you see problems like this, you're going to see them meet in the middle. So if you saw, if you just know that, you know to get rid of this right up top here. Um, and then you just solve it, and you get your answer. So um, what I'd like you guys to do now is, okay, take some time in class and go back to um, this problem, number 17, all right? Take a look at that. Try it out your own. It's not that bad. Just a little bit of length to it or a little bit of trial and error. Um, if you have any questions on the air stuff we went over, feel free to ask. Tomorrow, again, the test is 20 questions, multiple choice, one question open-ended. The open-ended question is one very similar to the one we went over in class. So if you guys are good with that, you'll be perfect tomorrow, and you'll rock, them, rock it out. So, all right. Keep up the good work. As always, good luck. We're all counting on you.